Hey, construction legends. So there are four key points if you want to excel as a construction manager or in construction in general. And the first three are kind of well known. I'm sure that you've heard about them before. The last one to me is the most important. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kian Brennan. I'm the CEO of a company called Quantum Contract Solutions. And the reason we make these videos and podcasts and all the content that we put out there is because there's so many construction companies out there that are losing money because they don't know how to manage their contracts. They don't know how to get their cash flow a lot better on their construction projects to avoid disputes. All the commercial side of construction, which is not necessarily where people are used to. People have come in and they've been good at doing a particular trade and they've grown up at delivering an amazing product, solving amazing problems. But the commercial side of the business sometimes goes away. And so that's where hopefully by listening to these videos, the pod, that you absorb a lot of this content and don't make the mistakes that we've made and don't make the mistakes that the hundreds of companies that we have worked with have made as well. So lessons learned, let's call it. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So we've seen on having dealt with at this stage now over 3,500 contracts and another 3,000 at least extensions of time and changes to scope and advice and disputes. And we've seen the same things crop up time and time again when you're on site and you're, you're trying to build stuff and you're dealing with construction managers, project managers, what is good and what is not good. And here are the four things that we have seen that make a big difference. So the first thing is is experience planning and organization. So candidly, if you already have the experience to solve a problem, you're able to then make sure that that problem doesn't happen. So obviously the less experienced people aren't able to do that. But if you've seen something happen before, obviously you're going to be able to make sure that that doesn't happen on this project. So experience does matter a lot, particularly in construction, because there's so many of the same things that happen over and over and over again on whatever it is that you're doing that you know, hey, I reckon recognize this from before. Here's what happened. Here's where it went wrong. Here's what we can do instead. The more of those things that you have in your armory, the more valuable you are to the project because the more problem can solve, essentially. Planning and organization is the next thing. So planning and being pretty good with the schedule, the actual construction program itself, understanding it, being on top of it. You're not going to necessarily update it yourself, but making sure that it's regularly updated so we know exactly what's happening. The people that we see that are on top of this is they're the guys that do a lot better. They constantly, constantly are, and, and they're on people's cases as well. Where's this? Where's this? Where's this? They're vocal about it and they're really good at organizing. This has to happen before this particular thing. Oh, okay, we're delayed for today. So that means that this has to be reshuffled. The people that can do that and basically, you know, it's if you've ever seen the biggest, I think the biggest shipyard in the world is the Singapore shipyard where they literally, Keppel Fells, it's called. You can see them manipulating stuff and moving stuff around all the time. It's fantastic to look at. But if you can do that with your construction project, that's what you should do. The next thing is solving problems. So there may not be issues. There's a lot of different kinds of problems that are not just constructability problems. There can be supply materials. There can be loads of different reasons that you have issues. Internally, you might have problems. And so if you're good at solving problems and making decisions, so ultimately you're going to have to make a decision about something. If you're good at that, it can make a huge difference. And so the best way you can be good at that is following a framework because without a framework, emotions come into play and you can make bad decisions with emotions. So emotions are fleeting. You'll feel one way one day and the next day you'll feel completely different. And if you make the decision with that bad emotion without going through this framework, then it doesn't always work. So people always say sleep on the decision. And oftentimes that doesn't work because you just practically you don't have time to do that. And secondly, you can still make a really good decision be angry about the whole thing, but just follow the framework. And as long as you follow the framework, the emotions don't really matter. So here's the framework. Hey, legend, just quickly, if you got any sort of value from this video, hit the subscribe button and we'll send you a free virtual construction site coffee via fax directly to your fax machine over here. Hit the subscribe button. Cheers. 
first thing is what is the logic so we got logic evidence and utility then you make your decision so logic is the first thing what is the problem you're trying to solve that is my favorite question in construction so whenever i jump on a call with a client and we're talking about someone like, what's the problem that you want to solve and so that makes you think about well what am i trying to do here then the next question comes in do i actually have a problem here what happens if we did nothing okay so once you understand that there are the questions and what am i optimizing for so what am i trying to do once you understand what you're trying to do okay and now you understand what the actual problem is you wouldn't believe how many problems gone away by just asking that question is what is the problem you're trying to solve and then ask yourself well what are my options now we move to evidence you go okay what is the evidence i have in front of me these guys are late or this thing has happened or a lot of times someone might say it might be some hearsay where someone says ah this guy says he's going to be late well that's that's okay a bit of evidence that someone has said something but that's not real hard evidence that you can actually rely and you don't know for sure if this thing is going to happen. So look at the stuff that you're sure about from an evidence point of view, because in the future, if someone goes, hey, how did you make this decision? Like, where did you make it from? You want to be able to say, well, I, I, there's this thing and there's this thing and there's this thing. And that's the evidence that I use to make the decision. And the next one that I find very useful is utility. So with utility is basically what will happen if I make the decision I think I'm going to make in a week, in a month, in a quarter, in a year. And then, you know, in if it's very big decisions in 10, 20 years, if you have warranty type of things, run it out on those different timescales and you can see what sort of things can happen. Then make your decision. And that's the best way that I find to make really good decisions, regardless of if you're angry at someone or upset about something, it allows you to just be good at your job. Next thing is stakeholder management. So when people are talking about stakeholder management, so internally in your own business, you got to manage your bosses. And so what are we talking about here? Like what, what does that actually mean? What do you actually have to do well two things is externally to the client you got to make them feel like you got it you're on top of it. and internally same thing you got to make them feel that oh this guy's on top of it he's keeping me abreast of the situation so what does that mean it means communication needs to be high more communication that you give the better because they're more up to date so if you can create a rhythm to update your internal management here's what's going on here's what's going on you can let them know no no and then they're much happier that you're on the case and also internally when you're going to them. You don't want to go to them with a problem and asking them to solve the problem. You want to go to with what we call 131. You got to go, here's the problem. Here are three potential solutions. I suggest going with this solution. And then that's how you would take something internally to management rather than going, here's the problem, like solve it. If you go with the 131, it makes a big, big difference. Externally to the client, again, go with the 131. It's a fantastic way to approach your client in any way. Go, here's the problem that we have. It's going to cost way more for whatever reason. Here are the three different solutions that we have. And I suggest going with this particular one. Which way do you want to go? Also being aware, like no one's ever going to give out to you for having too much communication, but they certainly will give out to you for not having enough communication. So communications is very, very important. So when people talk about stakeholder management is you want to make your stakeholders so internally and the client, make them feel like you got it. This guy is competent. He knows what he's doing. The best way to do that is to communicate what you're doing with them on a regular, regular basis. Now, the last one, which I think is the most important is is getting other people to do what you want. Very simply, how can you get people to do what you want? I know people know that it's not easy, but when you're actually in a position when you just want people to do, why didn't you do this? That used to happen to me all the time when I started a business. I'm like, I don't understand. I, I, I showed you how to do this thing and here's the thing. And then you just didn't do it. I, I don't understand. Help me understand. Those type of things happen all of the time when you're in a leadership position. People just not doing what you want them to do. So how do you do what you want them to do? Very simply, you want to lead with reward and not punishment. Let's just say you asked all of your staff to submit their timesheets by 4 p.m. every single day because you need to turn them around, you need to get them client later on, whatever it is. Let's just use that as an example. And so let's just say a number of people didn't do that. So the way most people would, they would lead with punishment. They go, there's all these guys haven't done this particular thing, right? They're bad, bad, you know, bad for doing it. And so that doesn't actually change behaviors. What actually changes change behaviors is rewards. And I'll talk to you about herding cats rather than herding dogs, right? So with rewards, we would rephrase that instead. And we go, thank you guys. 90% of everyone has filled out their timesheets. Awesome job. Really, really appreciate it. 10%, you guys know who you are. Can you get it done by the end of... You still need to get them to be done. So you need to get that done. And this way now we're rewarding people that have done it. The next time it comes around, people more want to be rewarded for the the thing. So they're going to want to do it. That's how you get people to do it. 
you. And there's a concept of training cats. Organizations and people in organizations are more like training cats. With a cat, you can't punish a cat, right? So in the military, for example, you can punish people like that's how they get them to do work. Basically, it's constant shouting at them, punishing them. But the thing is, they have no option. They can't do anything else. They can't go anywhere. In business, in construction, they can, they don't like you. They're going to piss off. They're going to go to another job with someone who's a bit nicer, basically. And so you can't do that. They're like cats. And it's a cat's the exact same thing. If you feed a cat, and you're nice to a cat, a cat will stay around and do what you want it. If you don't feed a cat or if you give the cat a bit of a, a whack, he's going to piss off. He's going to go find another family and that's the end of that. So that's how you want to treat, if you want to get people to do stuff, you've got to take a different approach to it. Anytime you see a good behavior or a good thing that someone's done, you want to be very vocal about rewarding it. It is almost that simple. If you're able to do that, that makes a massive difference to the morale of the people that you're working with. They think you're a much better leader, much easier to work for and you actually get people to do what you want, which is going to lead to you being way better at your job. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, drop me a subscribe so that more construction people can find us. Love you lots. Take it easy. Hey, construction legends. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want more of the same, please click here to have another cool video. And we've also got a full contract negotiation training course. It's six weeks everything you need to do to negotiate your own contract. It's a playlist. Click on it, go through all the training, and it'll make you way, way better and, and allow you to sign way less riskier contracts and set yourselves up for success. Okay, so choose one of them and go, for, go forth and conquer.